That's funny. Okay, so Jared, you just yeah. got last night. Do you, you're yeah. fresh out in the real world. Do you kind of know anything about what's going on outside the house? Outside the house, or are you guys oh, like, no. you know, people watching the show? Like, what do you know? Like, are you still like fresh out? Like, I feel like when house guests get out of the house, like a Martian, you know? Oh yeah, no, I'm still fresh. Uh, no phone, no anything. This is uh, I'm always still hearing stuff about inside the house, so I'm still there a little bit. <laughs> so I always think that it's so interesting to like get the house guest perspective whenever they get fresh out of the house because it's always so different than the viewers. And during America's <laughs> vote, you were you are certain that there was no way that Corey would be voted as one of America's favorites. So I want to get yeah. your opinion on who you think America's favorites are right now. Um, I believe it's going to be Mama Felicia, Matt, Sari, and Mama Felicia, Matt, Sari, and probably Cameron. You never know. <laughs> Expect the unexpected. Um, yeah. So early in the game, you were when you were starting to get close with Blue. You yeah. told your mom that you and her relationship was strictly gameplay. Yeah. Can you explain the strategy behind that move? Yeah. Um. At that point, um, I, I was uncertain about where me and Blue was going to go. I knew that we were getting close as friends, and I knew that there was possibly potential for us to bloom into something more. But um, just as far as my mom knew, it, it was that as it was that in the very beginning. Excuse me, in the very early stages of me and Blue, uh, kind of ultimately getting into where we got uh, at the end of this game. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to let my mom know, like, hey, this is the person that I'm trusting. This is the person that I want to see in my game and uh hey it may be something more and I'm sure my mom knew me it was like hey you, you probably got something for her there she probably got something for you there but uh at that point that's what it was so during that time when you were like this is only gameplay it's all gameplay you man you talked about her you asked about her body count so many times what did that yeah. have to do with gameplay uh, so we were just starting to try to figure each other out. And I think uh, we early on, like she told me, she knew that there was a potential there, but she didn't know why. And we were just starting to discuss certain like little funny nuances and just, hey, about relationships. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And hey, what's this? And hey, what's that? So I think that was just one of those questions that popped up. And was like, hey, what's that? So uh, you ended up telling Blue your secret, but yeah. you weren't entirely truthful with your mom about telling Blue the secret. You tried to blame Izzy for maybe Izzy was the one that spilled. You even tried to convince your mom that maybe she was the reason why Blue put all of this together. Um, why didn't you, why weren't you truthful with your mom about that? Uh, so one thing that me and my mom both made a mistake on was we told ourselves that we would never intertwine our stories at all. So there was a lot of things in a lot of moments where my mom says certain things that intertwine with what I told Blue already and then we would kind of look at each other with that look like hey I said my dad's name already and she's like well I said your dad's name too and I'm like I talked about my new year's party she's like I talked about your new year's party too and I'm just like oh man but more than anything I just didn't really want my mom to start getting paranoid about it and uh, I knew that my mom was in a a good frame of mind at that point in time and I really didn't want her to start worrying about okay we already got we didn't get rid of, but we already lost one person who knew about our secret. So, hey, we kind of reset the playing field here. And now there's another person who knows about our secret, but this person I don't really trust as much. And uh, that was one thing that I really didn't want to drill into her head to hinder her game at all. I really didn't want her to start maneuvering different just because she was worried that Blue would like divulge the secret. So um, going into the game, did you know about the 24 hour live feeds? Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, uh, they prepped us really well for that let us know like, hey, there's gonna be people watching 24 seven, so yeah. So sure. I have to ask you about something that you mentioned on the live feeds. You said that you yeah. just recently started seeing females as people. How did you come across that revelation? Um, I think right there is, I, I really completely got my words misconstrued and I, I, I absolutely wanna get ahead of that and apologize. I've always seen people as people, especially being an Af African-American descent. I've dealt with these things a lot of the times where people told me they hadn't saw me as people. Uh, and, and one thing, like I said, I have really tough skin, so it was something that I was able to get past, but uh, I never wanna put that message out there that I just seen people as people. Uh, everybody's a person to me, regardless of height, gender, sex, whatever you wanna consider, um, everybody's a person. Uh, and that's something that I completely wanna get ahead of and just let people know that. Um, I just started understanding more or less that, hey, everybody is entitled to their own perspective. Um, me 
wording it how I worded it was completely wrong, and I don't want to put that notion out there by any means necessary. So where do you and Blue stand today as a showmance? Hey, uh, she wanted me to go see Mama Kim. She told me to make sure I'm waiting for her in L.A. once uh, all this wraps up. And uh, like I said, I, I hate to jinx the future, so I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go after this, but I think uh, I think there's a bright future for me and Blue Ahead. So not too long ago, earlier this week, you were shouting out Kinzo on the live feeds and saying that you loved her and that you can't wait to see her. So how, I mean, aren't you a little bit nervous about how that conversation's going to go when you get back? Uh, No, for sure not. I, I told Kinzie regardless of, uh, our breakup and everything that happened. Uh, I always look at her as a great friend and uh, we built a lot of bonds and shared a lot of experiences together as friends. And uh, regardless of our relationship and us not being able to be in a romantic relationship, I still look at her as, as a great friend. She taught me a lot about my life uh, and that isn't going to change regardless of my relationship status moving forward. And uh, I, I still do want to make sure that I keep a friendship with her regardless through everything. And last question, uh, in the game, you once said that you had to be on your best behavior to not re not mess up your reputation on the outside of the house. However, you did call America the R word. Yep. Was this your best behavior? Uh, by by no means necessary was that my best behavior. And I actually wanted, wanted to apologize. I have apologized. I want to continue to apologize about that because there's just no space for that in my actual life moving forward. And I uh, completely immediately started to reflect on that and make sure that that's just something that will never happen again. It's just unacceptable. And uh, I learned almost immediately that, that it is unacceptable in the house. And uh, they were really stern about handling it. And I appreciate the way that they handled it because it is something serious. And it's something that I do take serious. And it's something that I do want to be uh, expressed. I do want to express my uh Apologies about that for sure. All right. Well, we're out of time. Welcome back to the real world. Good luck. Thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> Bye.